What were you telling Christopher Dias's uh, stepfather? I was saying that the public defender made no effort whatsoever to defend Mr. Diaz. That all he had to do was go online, look at the media coverage in that area of Texas where Mr. Diaz is being made an example and the whole area there uh, is laying for him to get back and they're going to max him out for a small amount of dope. There's no evidence that I could find anywhere online that Texas ever extradites for small amounts of drugs, any kind of drug, never. But obviously they've made a special case here, a special, somehow he's irritated them to the point where they especially want him back where he has absolutely no chance to get a fair trial or any kind of trial at all because his defense is already disallowed. The state of Texas doesn't recognize it. So you could argue, argue constitutionally, it's uh, he's not getting any kind of a shot at a fair trial and that in that particular area, he's certainly not gonna get a fair trial. Mm -hmm. And the public defender made no effort to even, apparently no effort to research the case or to look into these kinds of facts of the case. Uh, he wasn't really a bail jumper because he wasn't hiding. He wasn't a fugitive because he wasn't hiding from anybody. They just went out there and arrested him. What so, happened today? In, what happened today? In the Mendocino courtroom. Well, what happened today is what ha often happens in Mendocino County. The liberals get all excited about a liberal judge being elected to the Superior Court, in this case, Ann Mormon. Let's elect Ann. She's one of us. She's a good, fair, compassionate person. And what happens, we get into court and Ann takes a powder, Ann ducks. <coughs> and so shoves us off to this retired judge from uh, Sonoma County who just said, nothing I can do, my hands are tied. They go through their procedure and, and that's it. It's, it's farcical, it's, it's going, pilot. yeah, it's going, it's going through the motions here. You just pass on a case that you don't want to take. She said her calendar was crowded, but you could see for yourself in her courtroom how many people were in there. Three guys? Well, all the rest of the cases were already done, matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. So this was, was the final case. Yeah. That's right. She, she ducked she, out. She, okay. she just ducked opinion. out. She saw that there were people there watching the case, and she said, oh, no, no, I don't want to do this. Nobody let him do it. Let, let the old hatchet man from Santa Rosa do it. What is the family story? What, what brought Chris to Mendocino County to begin with? His you say his illness. What was going on in Texas regarding his illness? Well, you know, he had a, he had a severe asthma and multiple, multiple chemical sensitivity disorders. Uh, he was uh, the, the the environment around him was very effective to to his life. Yeah, you know, in, in Central Texas, the, the pollen was wreaking havoc on his allergies, and then in North Texas, the dry, arid air wasn't any, wasn't any better. And what was what alternative did he reach for here in Mendocino County? Why come here? He started on an organic diet in Texas. Uh, North Texas wasn't providing for his organic diet. They, it was, it's real hard to find any good quality food there. Uh, and that was, that's, that, that was very important in his, in his healing process because you remove the poisons from your body uh, and your body has the opportunity to heal. So what else did California have that Texas did not? Cannabis, hemp. Medicinal, medicinal marijuana, it, it, it's a savior, I mean, to him. I mean, it's the most powerful bronchial dilator, uh, natural bronchial dilator, um, and it's, it's a healer. It's a healing plant. Dr. Courtney, you're his uh, Current recommend, physician. Yeah. recommending physician. Can you tell me what your perspective is on... I mean, there are crimes, there are crimes, and there are crimes of serious order, and what's happened today is a crime of the most serious order. This is not a technicality, this is a death sentence. He'll not survive in, an, in a uh, jail that is not air conditioned. Uh, the jail that he's being sent to, four people have been have died of traumatic brain injury. Um, it, the violence down there against cannabis is, is palpable. Um, the environment is, is unacceptable. His tolerance of Western medicines, which will be all that are available, is, have sent him to the ICU. And it was in Texas, he told me, that uh, the physician there said, you need to go someplace where you can use cannabis legally. He was here for six years. He was legally using cannabis. He has a right to his life and the medicine that sustains that life. And he has a right to see his grandmother who's dying at 88 and take his grandchildren to see them. So this was a, this was a trip back to say goodbye. And this is, this is because he has a California driver's license. That's all it takes to search in that state. And sure enough, you know, here's the medicine that keeps him alive. And they're talking about, you know, transportation or intent. This, you know, his had less than an ounce, and they are going to extradite him at a tremendous cost for less than an ounce. 
he deserves medical asylum. And the judge, you know, Mormon was our was our individual who, okay, let's set a precedent. Let's say this young man, father of two young children, deserves to take care of those children. He deserves a life because this is a death sentence. This is not a technicality, and this this blood will be on the hands. And Rosenfield, he, you know, you got to sense the callus is so thick, you know, he, you know, what's the heck? Mormon is more sensitive, and, and, and this young man's death will bother her, but she just quite didn't have enough strength to stand up and say, he deserves medical asylum. This is where his life is preserved and maintained, and he has a right to that medicine. And after six years of being here, this is not some kind of in and out lark he deserves. He deserves a much better representation from the justice in California. And we need to develop a system whereby individuals can leave this state under with their medicine and go back to see family members that are that are dying. And that, that is not a crime. He has a right to life in, in that trip back there. And that's not violating uh, Texas's conditions. And, you know, is he violating infringement? The, the federal government has patents. There are patents on COPD. I mean, the, his use of this medicine is hundreds of years old. The pharmaceutical industry is used to provide, like Eli Lilly. It's understood that cannabis is very useful for this condition and does not have the side effects that he had run into after 20 years of West Western medicine, which, like I said, finally hospitalized him and forced him to turn away from those very toxic medications. So he understood that the cannabis was important. He came here for safe use. He lived here, and because he wanted to say goodbye to his grandmother, he is now going to face a death sentence on a technicality. That is the crime. His his going to say goodbye was not a crime. Folks, <clears throat> uh, I don't advocate all marijuana usage. Okay, um, like Pepsi and food and breathing, everybody abuses something. So I'm not saying everybody uses this, uh, uses it in proper terms. The reason why I'm here, I just met these people. Because um, I was a recreational user in my life. Being raised in a Christian family, <clears throat> I was already deemed broken and it took my mother 28 years before we sat on a mountaintop she saw my heart. I said, wow, you can actually partake in that sacred herb and still be loving, caring, responsible human beings. We're sitting here abusing all this other crap on this planet that we've created with our own hands. It didn't come from our Creator. It says in Genesis, He created this. He made no mistake. When we abuse it, that's our mistake. It's not Creator's mistake. This is Pontius Pilate. It's that simple. He is standing as a Christos, Christ, for this purpose and cause right now. I watched it with my own eyes. I wish I was in a movie. I wish this wasn't real. Uh, but as the doctor said, uh, this is a death sentence. He went before a judge. They all know it's unjust. None of them want the blood on their hands. I mean, this was just so much the story. And the judge did pass it on to another judge that has no heart attached to the circumstance. Um, wherever this is going to go, whoever is going to see this, Write the state of Texas. If you live in Texas, I'm asking you to take your tax money away from there and move out. Like, dry the whole state up. Literally. They won't have anybody to pay any of their bills. No attorneys. No cops can get paid. No mayors. No nobody. If you participate in the sacred herb, call your governor and pack your bags and leave to a state that will gladly accept you and your money. Chris Diaz is not a criminal. He is about as far from someone who commits crime as people come nowadays. He is a sickly person. He had uh, an experience in Texas with law enforcement that caused him to have to be in custody and then under prosecution for a long time. And he is so sickly that both of his lungs collapsed. And they had to patch him together, sew him up. It shows that He's already extremely vulnerable as a person who's 22 years old and has the body of a 60-year-old man whose lungs collapsed. That's breathing. That's his condition. Asthma is his nemesis. It's, it's the thing he has to live with in life. And Texas took away his medicine. Mendocino County took away his medicine. They put him in lockup in solitary confinement so he could think about his plight. And he has come out to a community that has that loves him, that basically has adopted him 
as family, I was willing to take responsibility for him if his he was granted OR or if his bail were reduced because I'm so confident that he would not run, that he would face the consequences. The important thing is that we are here for him, but the court, the system is too punitive to be just. And whenever a system is not just, if it's too punitive to be just, don't go along with it. Change it. Stand up against it. Whatever it takes. Well, we tried to do that. And it didn't quite work for us because extradition is outside of the criminal law setup. You know, the structure of criminal law allows you all kinds of rights and, and, and lots of leeway and months, sometimes even years, to accomplish your goal or not accomplish it. He was not given that. He was not even given a single day for a hearing to come back to face another judge. In a, in a news broadcast a couple of days ago, uh, the interview with the spokesperson from the uh, from Eisner's uh, identify him as a sovereigner. That was just things that they played in the media last year that they just built up against him and his family and just built it and built it and built it because the poor kid, he, he should, he, for his 16th birthday, he had a baby. He didn't get a driver's license. And so when he was traveling, he got pulled over and was, was quite honest and kind to the, to the highway patrol and said, look, I don't have a driver's license. But when he got to the jail, the first thing everyone said, what, what we heard was, oh, this is the guy that doesn't have to follow our rules. Just rumors start to fly and then from there. See, only 10% of the people have to believe something for the whole, for everybody to start following. I think what we did today here was witness uh, an infectious America, and we're seeing it all the time in these demonstrations. Things are going down in this country, and this is part of the process. We wasted thousands of dollars today over this silly thing. It's not silly to him, but it is to all the rest of us. He should have just been turned loose today, as far as I'm concerned. You're right, he's not a criminal. He's not a criminal. <laughs> Not by the stretch, you know. We've, we're saddled with this third strike thing. I don't even know if the kid's got a previous He's strike. Got nothing. I don't care. Nothing. Something it's just a waste of time, and money, and his life. It's terrible. Doesn't somebody have any compassion in the court system? You know, let's revert back a little bit. About six months ago. I read about this teacher in Willits, and he's banging a 15-year-old girl. So at 8.30 in the morning, he's going to get sentenced, Judge Brennan. So I go down there just to audit the case. I mean, they adjudicated that by numbers. All you people here for uh, Chris Smith, I'll say his name. Well, everybody stood up at me and my buddy. Oh, okay, the judge says, well, it looks like uh, he's okay. Uh, well, that was statutory rape if I ever saw it in my life. He was texting himself nude, masturbating over the internet, just doing all kinds of crazy You see these little tickles and, and, and things start happening, you lose all respect for your justice system. Well, you can already see the judge, you know, the, 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 the history of the judge in Texas, who, you know, his, his, his little 16-year-old daughter videotaped the beating that she received from her judge father, and she put it on YouTube. He's just a, you know, a typical uh, um, spare the rod, spoil the child Texan, okay? And uh, his, 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 the video beating of his daughter that he says, hey, it was just a little spanking. Two million people have watched that and, and are completely appalled. For myself, I am ordained. I love Yeshua. He saved my life. He's also clarified me of what's okay and what's not. Uh, the church, strongest standhold in the whole country. If you can hear me, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and you know what is just, call Texas, call the governor, and do something because this will fall into your home. I guarantee it. This flows downhill. There's no standing here at all. No. The standing that Texas claims is that, they, that Chris has harmed the dignity of the state. And, 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 and the district attorney is going to stand there for the and stand there for the state and say, You're, "We harm you harmed us by bringing your medicine in here. You've harmed us." Don't extradite this man. It's back to Texas to a death sentence. Uh, you know, Texas laws are barbaric. They want to charge. They want to send him away for a murder rap sentence, of five to ninety-nine, when the, the federal sentencing guidelines would only give him a maximum of six months.